Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. This is the Keep Hammering Collective with Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting like some a big announce or big like uh, Gideon. Yeah, yeah, some cool reveal, but no, just disappointment. Yeah, just more disappointment. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, Gideon's probably hundredth time on here now. I think this, yeah, this is a century of times on the podcast. Yeah, we just have some big, big news to <laughs> yeah. unveil. So we thought we it was definitely worthy of another show. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, what the news we have to share? Oh, I mean, yeah, you guys are going to want to stay tuned, and it's right at the end, so you got to listen yeah, to the whole thing. whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you won't believe this. And no, if you skip, it's not there. No, this yeah. is we we talked to YouTubes, and they told us <laughs> <laughs> the YouTube. Yeah. yeah, about yeah, it's big news on shadow banning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so okay. no, we got another update. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, <laughs> no I don't want to. I was just going to jump in. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go. So we just got back from the CRWM event. Yes, that was great. I like to say the acronym because I'm too stupid to say Colorado wins. Did you say, did you say acronym or acronym? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you said acronym, but I know what you meant. Yeah. No, I, I like to say that acronym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, Coloradoans. That that's not easy. You're pretty good at it. For responsible wildlife management. Look at that. I know. Yeah, I've been working on that. But that was a great event. So many good people. I didn't know we were we were driving out there, and it's not in uh, the metropolitan of Denver. It, it's not in the, it's not in like a large city. So I'm like, we're driving by you know, <laughs> wide open plains. I'm like, is anybody going to be out here for this thing? I don't think it's even big enough to be called a town. I think they call it a hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> it was a quaint little hamlet though. Um, what was the name of it again? Fountain or not? Not fountain. No. So there was Cannon City and then there was Florence. Was Florence. Florence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can City? Canyon. Oh, Canyon City. Yeah. yeah. I can't hear, you can't talk something, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Florence, right. And that was, I mean, it's got a cool little strip. You know, along there, we had breakfast um, when I got there. It was a whirlwind trip. If you're uh, in the on or in in the market for antiques, yeah, that's Florence the place to go. <laughs> they got hella antique shops, but it was it was yeah. I mean, it was cool. So we go out, and I'm like, I don't know, it was, you know. And I saw like some pictures from the day before, and it looked like it was like in a horse arena. And I didn't see any big, I didn't even see where people sat. I just saw dirt. I think it was where Laramie was speaking. And yeah. I'm like, God dang, out here looking around, didn't see a ton of houses. I'm like, there's going to be no, I'm going to have be talking to you <laughs> and some guy, some farmer or rancher. <laughs> and uh, the farmer from Napoleon. That creek, man, I found a couple of shelves on the arrowhead. Yeah, yeah. So well, I, in that creek, man. <laughs> <laughs> when I found that there's no arrowhead. I don't understand a word you just said. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I, that's what I was kind of expecting. And then we come around the horn there, and there is like tons of cars. There was a lot of people there. Stacked up. Yeah, it was good. It, it was. was. Uh, it was, man, I thought it was amazing. I thought the whole thing blew me away as far as um, how many people were there, how energized they were. Um, so the seminar was good. Yep. You know, I met, I, I knew a lot of people there. Um, just like, you know, Bill from iron, iron, uh, will broadheads, great guy. Uh, Ray Livingston had met him. Laramie yep. was there. Uh, Jeremy from what's it calls the call company. He spoke right after me. Yeah. Jeremy Hodge, I think uh, I can't remember the call company, but yeah. anyway, great people. And then, of course, you know, the guys, the, the usual suspects there, Dan Gates from um, Coloradoans for Responsible Wildlife Management and uh, Howell. Yeah. It, was, it was sick. So did a uh, seminar. Yep. Oh, and Mike and Brenda were there who had originally asked me if I'd go and help out. Mike and Brenda Powell, who I just love. There's great people. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was 
incredible. The seminar went well. I had no idea what I was going to say. Like always, as we talked about last time, just kind of like, well, I'm just going to open my mouth and we'll see what comes out, <laughs> which is kind of risky with me. But it has since gone well. Ar- since we've already had to start this podcast over. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Based no, on my first sentence. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. exactly. But, uh, and then we went to the banquet and then, yeah, it was, oh God, yeah. I gave Bob Holder that 50 year yeah award for being a game warden for 50 yeah. freaking years just a stud and his son zach's amazing um super cool guy also a game warden or they call him something else probably and then uh, bob's wife was there so and also zach's wife and, yeah. and daughter so so great, great stuff for the people that don't know you and bob go way back I yeah mean, he's checked in every bear you think or just about i no, i think every bear yeah every bear i've killed there and i've been you know for the last it's been a pretty good run but i've killed a bull buck and bear every year in colorado yeah. for a while so it's pretty cool that you were able to give him that, that yeah award. oh that was amazing i yeah. love that guy and what a what a service for 50 years to provide for that community yeah and he generally just loves what he does so i mean yeah i know people think oh game war and they're gonna looking for things to get get you in trouble on or bust you on or catch you on or whatever but you know, you know, I, I don't know. I just, that's not how I look at, maybe when I was a kid, I was nervous. Right. And yeah. just like when you're driving, you get pulled over, you're like, oh my God, what am, who knows what they're going to, they could write me up for anything. Yeah, right? I mean, every time I go through TSA, I'm like, who yeah, put I, that bomb in my back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, right. Are you, that's, I didn't do that. <laughs> I, so many, I, that's not mine. Yeah. Those are my pants. <laughs> <laughs> These are my pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but with him, it's always just been, it's been nothing but positive. So yeah, I'm, I'm, that was, a, that was probably, probably the highlight between that and, uh, all the kids, so many kids. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I had a note on, on here of, uh, Milo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little, little stud. He's starting his own YouTube channel and, uh, just, I mean, I cannot believe how squared away, and he had more money than I have in his wallet. Definitely more money than I have. He pulled out his wallet. He had actually money. He and did. I'm like, I was wondering if they, those were fake hundred dollar bills. I don't know, but how old was he? He's thirteen or eleven or thirteen. I yeah, think. yeah, and just so smart. Anyway, passionate archer, wants to film stuff. Wants to. It's I don't know. He just loves. I don't know, loves the lifestyle. Lives and breathes it, sounds yeah. like. Oh, yeah. man. It was, that was so cool. But aside from him, there's also a bunch of other young, you know, yeah. boys, girls, everybody just coming up, signing stuff, getting pictures. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to go back to the the seminar and highlight the guy that was uh, hit by a drunk driver. Oh, I know. Told his story. Yeah, yeah. Drunk driver's going 106 miles an hour, hit him, and he's fought back hard from that. I think read my book or listened to it, but probably I think read it in the hospital mm. and, uh, yeah, had a positive impact. And I didn't, I don't know, just every person that I met, it was just a genuine interaction. Yeah. And I'm just so thankful. I don't know. Sometimes I get, you know, you can get kind of jaded a little bit from social media and you kind of focus on kind of the stupid shit or you, whatever, you just get into your routine of life yeah. and you forget about how lucky we are to just have those opportunities. Definitely. And I just, that just totally, you know, I made a post or a number of posts about it because I took so many good self-timing photos and videos <laughs> somehow. But, uh, and just mention that, but I, I, I do want to call that out here on the podcast too. It's like, you forget just how, just, I don't know, I'm just grateful. And uh, I never thought I'd ever have a platform where people would care what I said or, have an ability to impact people like that, but I'm, yeah. I'm super thankful for it. That's, I mean, that's definitely my favorite part too <clears throat> of going to those things is just kind of seeing the the positive impact that obviously nothing I say or do, <laughs> but can at least help tell your story to the people that are listening. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't want this to sound like a compliment, but you get a lot of good photos and video. <laughs> So I hope that didn't come I across let, positive. I let you get your self Yeah, I mean, I, you can't really take a bad picture of me, so that's probably it. <laughs> no, yeah, you're, 
I don't know. So for some reason, Taryn today said, man, James has sure been a positive addition. <laughs> and so I told her she needed to move out. <laughs> yeah, sh shout out to Taryn. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Always positive. Yeah. Speaking of getting jaded on Instagram, I've got haters. What? Yeah. You have haters? I have haters. What'd you do? I ran an 11 minute mile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how... A straight uphill, thousand foot of gain in a mile and a half. I don't, that's pretty pathetic. I had a good, probably 15 people respond to my story and they were like, what did you walk half of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing. Everybody wants attention, right? It's just like, hey, well, how come nobody pays attention to what I do? But then when you get attention, it's usually negative. Yeah. <laughs> And then you're like, fuck. So then today I was like, all right, <clears throat> I'm going to go run a 5K, shut these people up. Mm -hmm. So then I posted the story and it was like, I'm slow, which mm -hmm. I am, but I'm not 11 minutes a mile slow. Yeah. And then Macy responded and was like, what's wrong with 11 minute mile? That's it. I was yeah. Like, fuck, See? I can't do anything. Right. See, now you made her feel bad. I quit. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, so now you're an elitist. Yeah. Right. Well, I've always been an asshole. Now I'm an, an elitist. So it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Macy, good job. Yeah. What if, if you're just out there doing whatever. That's what I said. I mean, that's, well, I never put up times, but I hate when people, there's so many uh, coaches from the couch or pros oh. from the couch or everybody's got a fucking opinion. It's like, shut the fuck up. Just go do something. Yeah. I don't you, care what time. Why do you got to comment? Yeah, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> that's what I was t talking to Trude about this the other day. Cause he's, you know, he just busted out that 249, yeah. 249, 11 marathon. But, uh, he put up some runs where it was like his, his mile average was 10 minutes. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, I'm glad you do that because most people stop their shit, rest, take off again, stop it when they get tired. And then of course our pace looks good, but it's, what is it? It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So he said, oh yeah, well that, when I did that 10 minute mile, he goes, I walked, I don't know, a mile or two miles with Alicia. And then he started running. So obviously his pace, right. you know, you only walk, it's like a 20 minute mile. And he's just like, I don't care. And who is, who yeah. Does? When you go out just running by yourself, it's not a fucking race. Yeah. You're not setting a PR every time. No. So people just need to chill <clears throat> out. I mean, that's what I like when people ask about running or whatever, I'm like, I, I walk when I want to. It makes it way more enjoyable. You I walk all the time. You don't have to hate it every time you go out. <laughs> Sometimes I should be taking like a bird book. I'm just walking, looking around. And little in little binos? <laughs> yeah. And just a little notepad and writing down. I saw a double-breasted <laughs> eagle falcon. Let me get out my pocket binos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're actually opticed up. Oh, they got Swarovski. Yeah, they do. They get serious about that shit. Swarovski, yeah. Or was it? It's a different brand I'm thinking of that's really big in the bird watching. I think I think Swarovski. Oh. I see them all the time out there. And I'm like, I mean, God, you're not even killing anything. <laughs> should be bringing a BB gun. <laughs> yeah, you just spent three grand, four grand on some binos. But yeah, I mean, so half the time I'm out there and like, I don't, I don't, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Just get out there. Get some, just get in the fresh air. Yeah. Um, okay, next. Tomorrow we leave again. So we just got, we got back yesterday. A few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. I finally got my bag back. Did you? Yep. So that's positive. Well, it wasn't your camera and all that. No, I always have that with me. Yeah, yeah. Just in case. Just clothes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So we just got back mm -hmm. home for a day. Where are we going tomorrow? We're going to San Diego and uh, going to go to partake in some baseball games. Mm. Have you ever been to a baseball game? Yeah. Back when I, I've done Boston three times, and oh. the night before the race is always a game at Fenway. Yeah, and that's kind of a tradition. You go to see Boston or yeah. you know, the Red Sox, and yeah. So, but I think I'm taking batting practice tomorrow. Did you know this? Are you actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so. At that's four. pretty sick. I know. Damn. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that'll be good for the foot off that plant foot on the back there turn the hips yeah tr pop the hips over did you play baseball yeah okay so yeah. you won't look too bad i was thinking 
I'm not going to look like Riley Green. Do you know who that is? Yeah. You've been seeing him? He mm-hmm. goes to wherever Tropicana Field he just put up the other day and fucking knocked a few out. Homers <laughs> in batting practice. <laughs> That's a good old country boy, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And he's thick, son. Yeah. yeah. He, a and he weight behind it. And he played college football. Oh, yeah. So he's not just a scrub. But, yeah, I won't... I, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, every once in a while, you're like, oh, back in the day, <laughs> I got a hold of one one time, and they're still talking about it, which isn't true. No, I one. did. I did hit. I, I remember one time, so I played left field, left out, I know you're going to say, left field, and batted second. Okay? Okay. Because I always got on base, even yeah. though, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. My batting average is probably like zero zero one, But... <laughs> There's always a pass ball or drop third strike or something now. Anyway, so I bat a second, got, uh, but anyway, one time we didn't have a fence. So the school back there was, I don't know how far. It seemed like it was a long way back. 650 like, feet. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it was like to right center was our wood shop. And then I think there was like a tennis court in right field, but I was batted right. So, I mean, I was usually going to left field. But anyway, freaking popped one. Didn't I remember? I kind of didn't even like. I don't even know what I did, but it just hit flush and it went a long way. <laughs> but wasn't a homer. It's probably an out. Well, so anyway, so you could you could hit, but you couldn't catch playing left field. <laughs> uh, I had one diving. I remember one running diving catch somehow, and I don't even know because our our baseball field had potholes and shit <laughs> like you'd be sprinting and like one go down low it's hard but i remember i, I did uh, there was like kind of like a line drive down the line and i somehow dove and freaking mm. caught it but well anyway yeah i played baseball better than i was a textbook pitcher could pitch but i i don't think i ever got on base <laughs> i don't oh, think i really? got on base once <laughs> oh yeah i could throw the ball but yeah a little disconnect there so yeah we're going to some baseball games you're taking batting practice apparently yeah did that's we, what they said we mentioned for who no are we not supposed to oh no i think oh. we can oh. for the pirates paul Skeens. yeah yeah so bp tomorrow yeah that's weird did you pack your batting gloves no oh yeah i don't I, i'll just put like pine tar on my hands <laughs> have you seen uh <laughs> you've seen happy gilmore right yeah. Are you going to stand in front of the machine and let it hit <laughs> Probably. I could maybe do that okay. I'd be good at that, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, so I don't know. I I mean, I think I'm. I, they said BP's at four and I'm going to go, so I, maybe I'm just watching. No, you got to step in there. Uh, we'll see. They said something about they didn't know if you could go in with the camera, though. So I'm taking BP, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told him, I said, you better have some people out in the stands to get all these balls James is going to yard out. I mean. If you couldn't hit, I bet, you know, you always say, God, if I could go back to high school at this size, I'm the same size. (laughs) (laughs) But people always say that. So, yeah, if you could go back now, you'd just probably be able to just crush the ball. Yeah, yeah. For sure. You know, if someone would give me an opportunity. Yeah. yeah, I'd be playing in the big leagues. So now, now you'll have your chance. So next, John Dudley, Hoyt. Oh, yeah. So that's thoughts. on your list? Yeah. I, I catch everything, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not because you just said it five I, minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. I guess we got some pro staff movement. So yeah, he, uh, that's what I've heard. He went to, he was with Hoyt for a while. I think originally Matthews, if I, if I remember the story correctly, Matthews originally, then Hoyt for extended period. And then to PSE and now back to Hoyt. Mm. You know, I really don't give a fuck what people do, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, I just want, if this is good, I mean, I, I want people to be successful. I never want anybody to fail. And I love, Hoyt's been great to me. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I've been with Hoyt since 2005. I have, they've, and I, I can't even, I couldn't even say something they didn't support me on. So it's like, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, well, they won't let you show the bow. <laughs> They're not supporting that. <laughs> yeah. That's probably on me. I should just send that fucker back. I'll tell you that right now. That is really hard. If it works out great. I think PSE is, uh, yeah, they've been up and down. You know, I was with PSE for a while. They made me the CRH blacktail bow. Did you ever know this? I think I've heard this story. Yeah. So they made me the bow. 
broke three limbs in one season. So <laughs> yeah. that was, well, I think they used the leftover stuff. No, I had a CRH blacktail bow back in probably like, man, I don't know, 2012 maybe or mm -hmm. 2011. And uh, no, it could, what am I talking about? Shit, I've been with Hoy since 2005, so I think it must have been 2003 or four. <laughs> a little, little off. God, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, so <clears throat> you know, PSE was they've been, they were one of the top three. It was Hoyt's always been there, Matthews, and then PSE. Um, PSE's kind of dropped off lately. So uh, you know, John went over there. I think about five years ago. Got some buzz over there, which is good. You know, I want it. I want want them all to be be good. I just with me, I just don't care what anybody does. I don't. Yeah. I don't. You know, people say, "Do you ever look at how other guys are working out or training for for the backcountry?" I'm like, no. I could. But I don't care what anybody does. You. It doesn't affect me at all. And to be honest, you know. <sighs> I mean, this is a business. Yeah. If, I, if all of a sudden, if I didn't have a platform and I wasn't, you know, quote, promoting bow hunting in the right way or getting it done in the field, they're not, it's not a charity. No. It's a business. All I gotta, these sponsors I gotta, would be. Yeah, I got to, you, you have to earn your way. I mean, yeah. it's good when you feel welcome and you feel supported. That's great. But it's, uh, <clears throat> man, you have to produce. So all I want, I just want people, if they're happy there, if they're, you know, if they have bigger dreams and want to go chase them, like I think John did when he went to PSE, great. I was, doesn't matter to me if, yeah. if it's good for him and them and it helped the brand. Perfect. If coming back to Hoyt helps him and whatever, I still have to get it done. It doesn't yeah. change anything I have to do. And it's like, doesn't, nothing affects me. Nothing, Nothing that anybody else does has any bearing on what I do. So I never even really pay attention. Um, but yes, it's good to talk about. It's good. You know, there's a little bit of drama in the industry. It's, it's cool. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's great. You got to talk about something. Yeah, got to fill this time somehow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I just, you know, hope, hope he makes good shots, get a bunch of animals on the ground, hoist, sells a bunch of bows and, yeah. but more importantly, hope I do. <laughs> <laughs> the only person i actually like care about really or want to try to like i i'm always rooting for 100 percent. I, I mean i'm rooting for everybody but i mean joe i want yeah. joe to be successful just because i took him on his first bow hunt so i got i'm always like want to make sure i'm always checking in how you shoot and how's the bow doing and i know the bow is great but yeah i, I mean i got i i feel like i have just a super or a vested interest in how he's shooting and set up and ready for the hunt. And he's, I don't know. It's not like I need to do anything. He's right. freaking obsessed with this, but, uh, yeah. Anybody else, whatever. I want them to get their bulls killed and be happy. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I understand that. I put my body through a lot. I found that ketone IQ has helped give me an edge when I'm running. I actually won my latest ultra and made sure I had some ketones to take throughout the race. I'm already drinking so much caffeine in a day. I really like that ketones provide a clean energy with no sugar or added caffeine. Ketones provide a ton of benefits to the body. The biggest being cognitive function. So I even down a shot before I podcast and I feel like it helps me think more clearly. I'm all for anything that makes me smarter because the guests I have on here are top performers in their field and I need all the help I can get. Ketone IQ is giving listeners of this podcast a great deal. They're offering you 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ at ketone.com backslash cam. Mudwater is a healthy habits brand best known for its popular caffeine alternative. It's got four functional mushrooms and the purpose is to never leave you feeling jittery. Don't get me wrong. I love coffee and usually drink five to six cups a day, but mud water has helped me cut back a little bit, especially once the afternoon hits. I still even throw a little mud water in with my coffee and they have a really good coffee creamer with MCT oil. Each ingredient was added for a purpose. Cacao and chai for a hint of caffeine and hot chocolate like flavor. Lion's mane for focus and both chaga and reishi to support healthy immune system. Plus, it's Whole30 approved, 100% USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher. Mudwater donates monthly to support psychedelic research and has since day one. They believe the country is in a mental health epidemic 
and that psychedelic assisted therapy is one of the most effective tools we have to treat mental health conditions. Mudwater is hooking up my show with a special offer. If you go to mudwater.com slash Cam Haynes, you get a free frother and $20 off. That's mudwater.com backslash Cam Haynes for a free frother and $20 off. I did want to shout out the uh, Knock Performance podcast you just did just because it was a you know, it's a separate podcast that you don't usually do. And so if people hadn't listened to that, they should go yeah. listen to it. I listened to it today on my way to the airport four times. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? I thought it was good. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, you called in from your phone, which I know you probably hated. Yeah, I don't. I like the in-person stuff yeah. for sure. Yeah, I get that. And I, I think I mentioned that to him. Um, yeah, he's just a young, young guy. Uh, I think he works hard. Yeah. So just like I just got done saying, I want everybody to kick ass. Yeah. You know, sure. I'm not I'm not rooting for anybody to fail out there. Um, so yeah, I I just want him to be successful. And he had asked me before, sent me a really nice message. I don't think I even responded to, so that was cool. Um, <laughs> God, I suck. Uh, but then just I think recently he asked, or he got a question on the Q and A, and they said, when is you know campaigns coming on or whatever. So I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah. And so we did it and yeah, I think he does a good job. I think he's working hard and uh, yeah, I want him, I want everybody to, to keep winning. I thought it was good. Uh, my only other thing on my list is on our flight back. Have you watched the Giannis uh, documentary? No. You should. Really? I watched it on the plane. It's really good. Oh yeah? Yeah. I mean, I know you like documentaries like yeah. that. But. We, I've been watching, the, <clears throat> have you watched the Tiger Woods one? Oh Yeah. You have? I love that documentary. Yeah, the, on HBO. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, so I was, I was, I mean, I listened to this podcast called Founders. Mm. It's so good. The Founders podcast is good. Yeah. Because Aaron Rodgers went on that one, right? Did he? Oh, maybe not. No. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. No, this one talks about like the one I'm listening to right now is on uh, Napoleon. Oh. And then I, I just got done listening to one. On, oh, and then, uh, this other one, I was, or the one I've got, uh, actually, I listened, already listened to Napoleon, but the one I'm listening to now is called uh well that's it but it's <laughs> rose blumpkin <laughs> is her name R warren buffett's um whatever favorite business woman but hmm. she was like uh i think in U ukraine or somewhere somewhere russia some i don't know but poor as hell left home at 13 got on a train went 300 miles on the train, got off at this city, went to this house with a shop there. And she said, could I work at your shop? She had six cents. And uh, that beats The Rock, who says he had $7. That's his like come up story, which John, probably a lie. John Cena's is 50 a day. <laughs> yeah, 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 so whatever. But I actually believe her. Yeah. Six cents, she goes and she's uh, said, could I work at the shop? And they said, um, well, no, I mean, we don't need any help. And they, she said, well, could I stay here tonight? They're like, you're a kid. And she said, yeah, I don't have a place to stay. I want to get, I want to get a job. And uh, so they let her stay there. And then she got up in the morning and cleaned the shop. And so they just hired her. She said, they said, okay, hired her. She worked there like three years as a shop manager. She was 16, went to this bigger city, went to this, like this men's wardrobe place and, uh, or men's clothes as a salesperson and became manager of that shop somehow this whole thing ended up getting married. Then her husband came to the U S she was left on her own. They only had enough money for one ticket to the U S or somehow Damn. she got to China somehow got on a, a boat from China, a peanut boat. I guess I held peanuts over, but got on that and came to the U S and then turned into this freaking business mogul. What is she worth now? I don't know. Pro I don't know. I never got to the end of it yet, but she's just <clears> kicking <throat> ass at the shop and like, I was listening to it when I was coming back from the doctor about, oh, your foot's still broke, you stupid fuck. It's exactly the same as it's been for eight weeks. And uh, she had gotten a car wreck, broke her ankle when she was 96 and went into work, I think that day afterwards. And she was like, people was like, why are you here? She was like, what do you mean? What, why wouldn't I be here? So this woman is legit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this Founders podcast, it talks about like Tiger, Jordan, Kobe, mm. uh, her, uh, Napoleon, um, Alexander the Great, and it's just crazy. I'm going to have to listen to it. Yeah, I love it. Good quality? Yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah. 
Damn. No, it is awesome. Okay. I put a note. But yeah, they talked about, I sent in the boys text yesterday about Tiger Woods' dad. Oh, yeah. Green Beret, you know? But I sent him, <laughs> they they always like, uh, I think we've talked about it. I could have been easier on them, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you've mentioned that. <laughs> Yeah, so I sit in this clip and uh, let's see. What, here it is. He would never run into anybody who was tougher mentally than he was, and we achieved yeah. that. Tiger says, my dad deliberately would use a lot of profanity when I was hitting golf balls all the time and throughout my swing. Uh, so this is what his father is telling his 12-year-old son. He probably did it when he was younger than 12, too. Fuck off, Tiger, he would say sometimes. It was, motherfucker this, you little piece of shit this. And then the line, I'm not going to say at all, calling him obviously a racist term, uh, things of that nature. He would- yeah. Yeah. So uh, Tiger freaking, he went through a gauntlet, but. Oh yeah. And also his dad, <clears throat> when Tiger was two, was calling news stations saying Tiger was going to be like the Mozart of golf. Oh yeah. Yeah. His, his dad, I mean, Tiger was a product of his dad yeah his for dad sure believed in it from the moment he was born yeah it was pretty crazy it's um, it's amazing but i just like was eating that up because i was like listening to that going i wasn't that bad of a dad then but i didn't <laughs> come on i never used any racist terms yeah. there's a there's a clip of tiger's dad sitting down the, the problem was is that tiger's dad then also really liked the attention yeah you know and he played this kind of role he would get interviews and stuff and say some things but there's a there's a clip of tiger's dad and he's like you know i i promise you tiger will never meet a person as mentally tough as he is yeah that's pretty true i know tiger's a killer so oh so yeah that anyway that that founders podcast that's yeah. what that clip is from just so we get we get credit out there so yeah well are you familiar with Giannis's story uh not really oh you, you should definitely watch that really I mean, yeah grew up his parents are from Nigeria, obviously. Then they just basically left Nigeria and, and kept traveling till they found a spot they could live, which was Greece. And, I mean, they were just, like, peddling things every day to, to eat. Whoa. Just selling on the street to eat. Got evicted a bunch of times. Um, <clears throat> and then when he was, I think, 13, he went and played basketball with his dad. And his only motivation was that he saw a video of Kobe Bryant, looked up his net worth, and his only motivation was, if I play basketball good enough, I can take care of my family. Whoa. Yeah. That's pretty intense. <clears throat> Which he's done. Oh, my yeah. God. That's powerful. Yeah. I love stuff like that. I know. I do, too. It, it, yeah, you should watch it. It's uh, It got me choked up a couple times. Really? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Well... Another part that you like, not in that, I mean, not another part, but another on the, the Napoleon episode, mm. the fucker was a winner. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> he said, if you're not winning, why are you alive? <laughs> yeah. And he said also like he was in so many w- battles and war. I, they mentioned like he had been in like more wars than anybody. But he said he loved the sweet smell of death because that means you won. So like walking the battlefield with dead bodies all around. That's pretty intense. Yeah, dude was, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's easy when you hear something like that to think that it just like didn't happen, but. Shit happened. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. He was like, they talk about this one part where he saw a dog that was wounded and must've been a bombing or I don't know. They probably didn't have bombs, but fucking cannonballs or something i don't <laughs> yeah. know what and uh, anyway the dog got hurt but he saw the wounded dog and there's dead bodies all around and he felt bad for the dog <sighs> yeah he's freaking I mean, he's legit so there's like this and we've talked about this before these special breed of men you yeah. know i talked about it in regard to hunting but this oh, through time and then also he says something about the only reason why he goes if it was left up to mediocre men we'd still be half caveman he goes, the only reason we're not is because of elite men. And if you're not an elite man, you're a fucking waste of time. Not wrong. <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, mean, I don't know I about don't the know. waste of time part. <laughs> no, you said waste of life. Waste of Fuck. waste of life. That's a tough reality. Oh, my God. Because yeah. I'm gone. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're half caveman right. still, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got I just this transcripts of this stuff are just so intense. I just love, I just like to read all these. Because the guy talks about books about, he's getting all this information from books written mm. on these people. So Does he recommend the books? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Totally got book, links to the books. And How long are the episodes? An uh, hour or so. Oh, no I think. shit. Yeah. I'm going to, I'll definitely have to listen to Probably that. a little longer. Uh, founders. Like this one, Michael Jordan, in his own words, it was, it was uh, 51, no, 51 minutes left. So, oh, shit, I don't know. Let me look real quick. Oh. Um, oh, oh, hour 34, 59, 58, yeah. hour 33. So, yeah, hour four. Dave Ser- Sinra is the guy. Hmm. But, yeah, so well, good. Maybe we can have Tiger Woods on the podcast. Yeah, we should be able to do that. Oh, yeah, we got Brady Ellison. Going to have him come on. Yep. Cole Hawker. couple Olympic yeah. gold Legends. medalists. Did, I'm sure Brady won. Yeah, he had to have won a gold. Some point. He's been to five Olympics. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, we'll get it figured yeah. out though. But yeah, yeah going to be fun. Yeah. So a couple good guests to look forward to. All right. I'll see you in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Just San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's a week. That's another, not even a weekly update. That's the update from two days ago. We're just <laughs> one every day. I think you cut off where we were talking about Sydney. McLaughlin. Yeah. But did, let, you, did you listen to that? Yeah. Let's, well, let's include that. Okay. Because I need Sydney to know. Oh. That she's my wife. Does her husband know this? Yeah. Yeah. He's totally good with it. Oh, okay. And he, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter that he could break me in half. No. And it's meant with all respect. So. Yeah. I, I'll do respect. Yeah. yeah. No disrespect. No. But. No. Yeah. So shout out Sydney, James. So it'd be. Sydney McLaughlin Leverone Williams. Leverone. <laughs> We're going to need to edit like, this out too because we would love for her to come on the podcast. It's like a lot of hyphens, <laughs> but yeah. Or would it just be Sydney Gideon? <laughs> I mean, that's got a good ring to it, doesn't it? Sydney Gideon. Yeah. Sid Gideon. <laughs> Sid Gid. Yes, that would be her nickname, Sid Gid. Sid Gid. But how hard does that freaking Simone Biles goat necklace go? I haven't seen it. Yeah, she's got, she's a, got a goat necklace. A necklace with a goat on it. Is it like diamond? Yeah. Because oh. she's the goat. That's pretty hard. I think Courtney needs one of those. I think she does too. I think Courtney could look pretty dripped out in some, Fuck. some ice. Do you see her new shoes? Yeah. Those yeah, are pretty. I saw when you posted them. Yeah, those are pretty good. Oh, did I post them? You posted a story or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, but no, the shoes look good. Yeah. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, well, I, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right, because that Australian breakdancer reminded me of Napoleon Dynamite. Did you <laughs> Did you see her? Uh, she said, maybe this is fake, but I saw something that she was like, yeah, I practiced for 35 minutes. Before this, I read where she she <laughs> travels around, and that's her art. She goes; those are all her own moves. Should I? So like, I, I like, got some moves on the table. So I, yeah, no shit, they're your own moves. <laughs> Nobody wants to do what you were doing. I mean, you got to give it to her. Never the, before seen. <laughs> the memes are insane. Oh, it's like you know when you, a mom tells her kids, you "Go in the bathroom, but don't touch anything." <laughs> <laughs> and they're sliding around on the floor on their head. <laughs> I love the one that's like when, when the five-year-old tells you to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's pretty much what it was. Oh, my God. I cannot believe what the hell is going on in Australia for their Olympic qualifying. Is it just a sign-up sheet and like in a fishbowl and then you pick a name? It must be, but I think I need to go live over there for a couple I know, years. Because so. they got the runners, like Jessica Hull is they were an kicking ass. amazing runner. Yeah. But the fucking break dancing. You know, it's it's not for everyone. I I think you're a little being a little closed minded. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think it's expression. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like that comment like the other day where you said the sprints need to be more in, ex, inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, to, to, there needs to be more. What was it? Yeah, to uh, Over- elaborate, the, yeah. the comment was, uh, it was it was a men's uh, 100 meter. I think yeah. was the video, and the comment under it was, "Sprinting isn't inclusive inclusive enough. We need more Indians, more Native Americans, more women, and overweight people." Yeah. And, and overweight people to be inclusive. Uh, so, you know, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree too. Yeah. And what about old fucking broke down bow hunters? Put me out there. <laughs> <laughs> inclusive. You could break dance. <laughs> For sure. I know I, I could I, do that. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is, oh, are you popping locking? That's not, is that break dancing? Oh, <laughs> nice. You got, get, uh, the, hey, yeah. get that in there yeah. for sure. Yeah, throw that in there. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's Good enough. luck. <laughs> every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me, stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood to why I'm relentless. My fault. They want someone to blame. They sent the hate. It fuels my pace. I am Roy Tuff. I am the change, the fuel, endure. Feeling like camp.